Yeah, it's strange to win an award during these uh, these times we're living in. Uh, I would much rather be with you all in Lunen. Yeah, I first heard about winning the uh, European Wildlife Photographer of the Year competition through a phone call. And I was super surprised and thrilled, really, um, because this image is part of a bigger story that was published earlier this year in National Geographic magazine. And it was right when the pandemic started. So I felt like the world was looking in a different direction when I wanted to talk about this subject. And um, this to me feels like I'm getting a second chance to bring this story uh, to the table. I've been working and following these Japanese macaques for the last 12, 13 years. And at first I was only looking at the natural history of the species, but slowly I started to learn more about Japanese culture and I started to see Japanese macaques performing in the streets as I was uh, roaming through Tokyo. And I started wondering how this would be possible in this modern day environment. And um, that's how I eventually started to connect all the dots and how I came up with this story that talks about the relationship between the Japanese and the Japanese macaques, which is a very complicated relationship. The first time I got into this entertainment industry, I went in with a very strong opinion. I still remember going in with some aggressive tension inside of me. I wanted it to stop, but at the same time, I was curious about what was happening. And one of my biggest questions was, how are these animals treated? How are they, how are they trained? How do they learn these tricks? And it was my expectation that a lot of this training was through negative reinforcement. And unfortunately, I've seen plenty of examples of that. Um, the good thing, though, is that there are people who actually treat the animals with respect. And a group of trainers that I met living close to Tokyo showed me their way of living with these animals. And they, they treat them as family. And uh, they treat the monkeys as, as you would treat your own children. And of course, it's completely unnatural to see a monkey in this situation. But I was happy to see that at least these people cared. And I remember one time uh, I had heard of a person who had a monkey as a pet. A friend of mine who speaks Japanese had called the man and asked permission for me to visit. I knocked on his door in the morning. I didn't speak any Japanese. He didn't speak any English. So there's two complete strangers face to face. And uh, I had to do everything with Google Translate. I asked him if I could get permission. And uh, he asked me how much time it was going to take, which is often not a very good starting point, because it means that people are not really willing to cooperate. And I just said, well, one minute would be OK. A day would be amazing. And a week would be a dream come true. And then he started laughing really loud. And he said, OK, let's keep it short. Six hours later, I left his house, uh, during which he had fell asleep uh, with his monkey. I was walking around his house while he was sleeping, and a monkey was grooming his, his hair. Absolutely mind-blowing. <laughs> monkey entertainment is legal. It has been part of Japanese tradition for the last 1,200 years. Uh, and people are proud of their tradition. <laughs> the goal for this story for me was to do it uh, with respect towards the culture. Culture is never an excuse for animal abuse, but um, to have a starting point saying, this is your culture, this is where you come from, this is what it has become. Do you think we should continue like this? There was one situation where there was a tavern 
where I went in and um, they had monkeys um, working as waiters and afterwards they give a show and these monkeys are uh, doing these tricks because they don't know any better. Um, the owner thinks he's treating them well uh, but since I have seen monkeys in the wild and, and know their natural behavior I saw a lot of fear which made me very upset. It's, it's still difficult. Um, I still get emotional when I think about it. And um, in the beginning, I, I literally had nightmares uh, because of it. Um, that situation where in the winning photo, the monkey takes off his, his own mask, uh, which is not part of the trick. It's, it's, it just happened. Uh, for me, says it all, which... Um, for me, makes this image work as a standalone image. Well, most of the others from the series really need context, but here it's so symbolic. There is a poem by one of the most recognized Japanese uh, poets uh, named Basho, uh, which talks about um, this situation where monkeys do the same trick over and over again. And the poem is, year after year, the monkey wears a monkey mask. And to me, seeing a monkey, not taking off a monkey mask, but taking off a, a human mask, um, while we are also doing the same thing over and over again, we're making the same mistakes, especially in our relationship towards animals. We, we keep making the same mistakes over and over again. Um, for me, tells something about that story, about that relationship um, between the two. Um, we've humanized our animals. If you look at your pets, uh, you can now buy clothes for dogs, for cats. Uh, it, I find it insane. Uh, we've, we've humanized them. They've become part of our families. And the same thing has been going on in Japan with, with the monkeys. Um, and now this monkey is taking off this human mask, revealing that there is a different being underneath. And um, I immediately had to think of that poem when I saw the image. And um, yeah, that's why the, the image is, is titled the, uh, uh, A Monkey's Mask. <laughs>